All right, welcome to our 6,000 mile update. Today we'll be going over some of the things that could have been a little better about the new 23 CRV. Don't get me wrong, overall I still like this car very, very much. Very happy with the purchase decision, but we're going to be playing a little devil's advocate and going over all the features that I can think of that could have been better and improved upon. And maybe some of these decisions might be a deal breaker for you when thinking about should I purchase this vehicle or not. So first up, we're gonna be taking a look at the wireless charger here. This one is a 15 watt wireless charger. Um, it does have some issues. It is not the best charger by any means at all. It's probably my biggest gripe with this vehicle. When you put your phone down on this, it'll a green light will turn orange, letting you know that it's charging. The little charger icon will come up on the screen. Um, my biggest issue with it is that it's very hard to get it to charge. I have an iPhone 14 Pro so it does have a little camera bump so it's a little lifted um i do have a magsafe charging case but even with and without the case it doesn't always activate the charging and then when it does activate uh you know five minutes down the road if your phone shifts a little bit it'll start decharging uh, or not decharging but it won't charge anymore it'll get off the charge mode and then it's overall even the charging strength is just not too high for a wireless charger, I feel like it needs to be a little bit more than a wired plug-in. Otherwise, it's just not sending as much because it's got to cross that air distance. When I do have it going and I can manage to keep it in the same spot, you know, after like an hour of driving, if we get lucky and it stayed the whole time, it won't even raise the battery level much. It's pretty much like a keep your battery the same charger while you're driving. So kind of disappointed with that i'm not sure if any other cars have better experiences with their wireless chargers or if anyone else has like a different phone and is getting some good results um luckily my battery on my phone lasts you know plenty throughout the day so it's not hasn't been like a true issue yet um but once my phone starts becoming not so great um that might become more of a problem and then i'll be wanting to plug in which defeats the whole purpose of this wireless charger upgrade so low quality charger the other thing is your phone still can slide around it's got these little sidebars to keep it in line but it still does shift forward and back when you break and that can cause it to get off the charging mode as well all right so next up is the little sunglasses holder up here it is plastic on the inside here it does have a foam on the back but because this portion is plastic your sunglasses can sometimes rattle and you know though i didn't know where that noise was coming from for a while and i thought something was loose on the car but then i just realized it's the glasses bumping up on the plastic here um, so i'm gonna get a little foam insert to place here so that they're not bumping around all the time but when you're driving on the freeway or something that can get a little bit annoying kind of a easy oversight that could have been fixed really well if they just extended the foam a little bit longer um, but that was something that was a little annoying as well. Next up is a little bit of size discrepancy for the reverse cams and the mirrors. So with the reverse cam, you can see it kind of looks like your car is wider than those lines right there. We go into the other camera mode, same thing. I can't tell quite where my car ends on either side. So I don't know if I'm really within the lines. I know it has these little guides here but even here like it looks like my car is wider than these lines so the camera is just a little bit of a weird angle um, but as you can see in the mirror here we are clearly have enough space on both sides and the car is not wider than those lines saying that as well these side mirrors here to me they are like kind of condensed Compared to my previous vehicle, everything kind of feels a little bit squished inside them. Um, I don't know if that's some kind of weird effect with the mirror, um, but to counter that, I did get these little side mirror add-ons. Um, these are like blind spot mirrors, so they let you see everywhere that this mirror does not let you see. Um, it does have that blind spot notification right there, but it's just nice to physically see what's behind you as well. And then just being able to line up your vehicle with those lines is also nice. So this little add-on was only like 10 bucks or so 
Um, if you guys would like it, I'll link it in the description below. But same thing on this side. So it lets you see down to the right. So I can see my back wheel right there, um, but I can't see it on this one. Over here, same thing. I can see my back wheel and I can't see it over here. So that's super important, especially when you're driving in an SUV. Uh, you don't want to run somebody over. That's kind of like a big issue with the rise in popularity of SUVs over the years is you got poor visibility. So you can't see straight down below. Um, you can't see your blind spots as well just because the car is higher off the ground and you got those big hoods. Um, but that's a problem for like any SUV. Um, Honda is not as much of an issue as like a big GMC Yukon or something. Um, but I like to be able to see as much as I can. Um, it definitely helps you avoid some costly incidents. So for 10 bucks, I say it's definitely worth the upgrade. Next up, I've had a little bug with the audio system. So I'm not sure if this happens to anyone else, but sometimes I'll have a song playing up on here. And then it's happened a few times now, but it'll randomly switch from the Bose system into this little, the call speaker that's up here. So you have a little speaker system. I'm not sure if it's up there or down here, but um, it's for your, your wireless calls and your Bluetooth calling. It'll switch from playing the song out of here into that little speaker. And it just, you know, it's not a great speaker. It's just meant for voice. It just sounds like monotone. Um, and I'll have to, you know, cancel the song. And sometimes it kind of stays stuck for a while, mess around with buttons. I'm not sure what I do to get it fixed. Um, but that's a little bit of an annoying glitch that occasionally happens. Maybe it can be addressed in a software update. And I, it typically happens when you're like done with the phone call. It'll try to go back to the music, but then it'll play it through the phone speakers instead. Um, so that's been a little bit of an annoying glitch. Next up, we have the horn. It is a little bit of a wimpy horn. Let me go ahead and play that for you. Let me pull down the window so you can hear that better. So very non-confrontational horn, which I guess that is a, a good thing. But if you're trying to get your point across, it's not the strongest horn. I know some other CRV owners are swapping it out and a few of them have videos on that. So if you're interested in getting a horn that sounds more like a horn, um, that is one thing to consider. It is a very light, soft beep a little soft nudge to the driver in front of you so i guess that kind of helps with all the road rage that's going on these days but take your pick if you're okay with having a horn that sounds really light this is the car for you if not you're gonna want to change that out so i'm not sure with honda's decision um but everything in this car is very nice like nice leather nice seats nice dash i love all these switches and everything um the plastic feels really nice and high quality where it is the leather feels nice everything's very intricate and detailed which i like a lot about this vehicle i don't like minimalist dashes when there's just like one screen like a tesla and nothing else that one it's it's not for me i like switches i like being able to change the volume physically um, not switching through a menu and trying to figure out the slider and everything. So it's nice that the air and sound have knobs and the parts that are on the touchscreen are exactly where they need to be. Um, but in terms of like the plastic quality and feel, for some reason, the center console is kind of the lowest quality in terms of the plastic in this vehicle, specifically this little latch right here. So this, it just, it's not that strong, you know? It clips in, it's an okay sound, but you can basically pull it up yourself. It's not like a super strong latch. And let's see, there's the little clip. Um, but sometimes if I bump it, it does open. One time I came back to my car and it was open. I'm pretty sure I closed it, uh, but not the highest quality latch right here. This cover part is nice, but I don't know. They could have gone with like a stronger ABS plastic or a little bit of a change in design to make that feel a little bit nicer. This is like not the greatest feel for a center console latch that you're going to be using a lot of the time. Unlike 
all the other switches and everything here feel very nice. They kind of drop the ball with the center console latch. Next, we have our reverse noise. Let's see if you can hear that humming. It is fairly loud, especially if you're in a garage at home. It's gonna echo through all the walls and it can be here kind of inside the house as well. Um, not like the biggest issue, but if you don't wanna wake people up and don't like a loud electronic hum, that is something can to consider because to my knowledge, there's no way to switch that lower in the settings. It is, a, I believe it is a requirement for electric vehicles to have a backup hum, but the Honda CRV, it's loud. It's much louder than like the RAV4, much louder than a Tesla hum. People turn heads when I start backing up, wondering what I'm driving because my SUV is singing the choir of angels. It's loud. Yeah. Okay, another issue that I've kind of noticed is when you put this vehicle in park, you need to also engage your electronic parking brake. When you're just in park, which a lot of people like to do, um, you're on your transmission, of course, but there is a lot of wiggle room. Like you get out of the car, or if you're on a hill, you'll notice the back and forth movement. Um, it'll shake forward and back a good inch or two, and it does not feel the most secure for parking. Um, when you have this engaged, your car is locked into position and it's a very noticeable difference when you park with just in parking or when you have your e-brake on. So anytime you park, you got to engage this. Otherwise, it feels like you're putting too much strain um, on the transmission. So I wouldn't ever just park here. Um, it just doesn't feel like it's that great for the car. I know most European countries, like everyone always turns on their parking brake, but here in the US, a lot of people just put their car vehicle in park and hop out. Um, I don't recommend that because your car does jiggle and you can feel the strain you're putting on the system. So you gotta always use this. It is electronic, so it will make that buzzing noise, electronic hum, which I think sounds cool. But keep in mind whenever you're park, you gotta turn this on as well. So an extra step there. All right, so outside the vehicle now, um, another issue is that these crossbars are placed very close to each other. Um, so if you're putting something large on top of your vehicle, there's still still some space for a little teeter-totter. Not sure why they didn't move this one a little bit more forward to spread the load across. Um, but the placement is just very close to each other and not the best if you want to carry like a large kayak or something um, it's yeah those are like what two feet apart three feet apart so not sure if that can be adjusted but those were where the slots were when I engaged them I don't believe they can so just a heads up if you're trying to carry a lot on the roof all right so besides the wireless charger the other biggest thing that bothers me a lot is that there are no fog lights on this vehicle these LED lights in the front are reflectors, reflector projection lights. They are not the brightest lights. When it rains, it is too dark for me to see on the road sometimes and I don't feel the most comfortable. So that is a big flaw with the lighting system. I believe the European models have fog lights over here and I have started seeing fog lights pop up on eBay where you can basically pop out this segment here and install them but that is a lot of work because you got to disassemble the whole front portion of your vehicle wired in with the battery not everyone's the most capable of doing that and then these are aftermarket parts from overseas so who knows what the quality is and how long they'll last currently I am going to be installing a set of fog lights on the front here I purchased a little bumper attachment that's gonna plug in where my plate was if I want I can put my plate in the front of it um, and then I'm going to be mounting two little Ron fog lights over here on top of that little bar and I'll wire it in. There is a space for fog light buttons. 
So yeah, there's a space for fog light buttons right over here. These are just blanks, so I'll buy a little switch online and pop one in there so we can have some additional lighting when it's dark out on the road. But not sure why Honda took those out, especially since they've been available on previous generations. But yeah, these lights, that is one of my biggest issues with this vehicle. Another thing in terms of the quality, I'm not sure why, but Honda decided to go with a plastic gas pedal and then they have the metal brake pedal yeah brakes are important it's need to be sturdy but not sure why they went with a cheaper approach and put in a plastic gas pedal here this is the view of the underside you can see the insulation and wires um, not something you see when you're sitting in the vehicle but yeah I was kind of disappointed that this wasn't also something sturdy and metal and it is you know electronic connection so you can see right there it's all going through the wires but yeah nice solid steel and then plastic for the gas recently another issue i've had is that i keep getting a little lane keeping assist error i only need to notice it when i first put the vehicle in reverse the buzzer go will go off and beep and tell me i have an issue with the lane keeping assist and to see a dealer but then once i start driving it's fine and i don't have any issues um, but that is a little annoying that it pops up uh, it doesn't always happen so i wasn't able to show you guys but it'll pop up in like bright orange there and tell me there's something wrong with the sensor i'll probably next time i go into honda i'll have them take a look at that maybe something's blocking one of the sensors but yeah that's been a little annoying in the morning no, it hasn't happened too often, but even the three or four times that it's happened, it's like a loud beep and it's like when I'm reversing. So I get a little scared that I'm about to hit something, but there's nothing there. It's just a little error with the lane keeping, which doesn't even act. It's not something you can use when you're coming in reverse anyway. So that's another issue that I have had. One thing that annoys me about the wiper blades is that sometimes when they're on, It'll do the white motion and then the last inch, it'll kind of get almost stuck a little bit, then continue that last inch. And that pause creates this little irritating noise while you're driving. Um, that's just a personal little bug that I don't like. And then I'm not sure why, but then when you pull these up, it hits your car. Um, so not the best design right there. Um, another thing, there is more parts on your wipers, so the water nozzle is here instead of on the vehicle, so you got a few extra parts to keep an eye out for um, the little hose, and that's where the water is coming through, and it, it'll spray the water as you're wiping, um, so that's a little different than traditional wipers, not the biggest, uh, not really, that's not really an issue per se, but the way it kind of pauses at the end and then continues the wipe. I'm not sure if my... But yeah, not sure why it was designed to hit the edge here as it gets picked up. If that scratches my car in the future, that's gonna be a little annoying. Next is the non-LED turn signal. So they made a very nice LED back red light, um, but then they decided to go ahead with old school light bulb here for the turn signal which kind of distracts from the nice LED view um, it's still gonna do its job but the previous version had an LED bulb in there so I'm not sure why they're backtracking just trying to find some ways to cut cost I guess or maybe supplies were low but if you do want an LED bulb um, a user on here uh, informed me that you can buy that bulb for about 40 bucks on Amazon I can leave a link in the description below if you're interested in that and you can complete your full LED look. All right, so next up, as you guys mostly know, this car does not come with a spare tire. I did get a flat recently and you can see this little rubber wedge right there. That is from a plug kit that I used to fix my tire. I did notice it while I was driving. Luckily I wasn't too far away from home, so I'll include a little picture of the screw that I drove into right here. And 
then because of that, you know, the tire did go completely flat eventually. Luckily for me, I do have an air compressor at home, so I was able to inflate the tire. I bought that plug kit for about 13 bucks at AutoZone, and I was able to stick it in there. Let me show you what that looks like. So we got that right over here. I just kind of stuck it into the tire inflation kit. But I had to use this guy. Oh yeah, this is the screw that was in my tire. Brand new screw, really interesting why that's on the road. Um, so I pulled that out, stuck this guy in with one of these little inserts, and then was able to keep it inflated, or I pumped it up with air again. And that bought me enough time to go to a shop to get the tire patched. As a result, I've now purchased my own cordless tire inflator so that if I need to keep the air pressure going after a patch, that I can do that until I get home. Um, after I plugged it with this, I had to drive about an hour and halfway through that, my air pressure signs came on again. So I had to stop by a gas station and reinflate. Um, which is why I purchased that cordless inflator, which has a nice battery so that I can use that in case I come through that scenario again. But yeah, there is no spare, as most of you already know. So if your tire gets completely torn apart, you are going to be stuck on the side of the road. I'm not sure how great the tire inflator kit is that it comes with. I'm sure it's got, you know, the pump and everything. I didn't want to open the seal on that because uh, it wasn't that drastic and the nail stayed in the tire so it was keeping enough pressure for me to drive to AutoZone and back um, but yeah just be aware you do not have a spare all right next up there is no release on the side here like some cars have to push those seats forward you do have to reach all the way hold this as you're pushing it down it can get kind of you know, as you're pushing it gets farther away and if you let go, it'll just get stuck at the next notch and you might not be able to push down all the way. So you'll have to go to the side doors and push those down. I don't know, some cars have a little latch on the side you can pull and it'll release the chair. Um, so that is a little annoying feature. You have to go through both your side doors to get that adjusted all the way down. So a little lack of features um, when you're paying for a top trim sport touring at 49k plus financing to not have the little amenities okay so now we'll transition from the few issues that i've had with this car to kind of just a general 6,000 mile update currently around 6,300 miles it is doing a little bit better since we got that recall update programmed in um, but still it depends on the tank honda mileage is honestly the weirdest thing some tanks it'll be great you know 38 40 some tanks it'll be lower 35 36 i still don't know why because i have the same drive always sometimes i'm magically able to get you know 39 40 on the freeway other times it's pulling 34 same freeway not sure why not sure if the sensor is just a little off i do check my mileage by after the fact, when I fill up my tank, I'll take the amount of gas that was put in and I'll divide that by the miles that went over for that tank. And I, it's usually about a mile per gallon less than what it's reading on the car um, odometer there. So just a heads up, mileage is a little weird. It's not the most static thing. But overall, I'm still very happy with the vehicle. The way this thing handles on the road is very nice. So that it's gone to a point where I just don't even like driving in other vehicles. I always offer to drive because it's just a very comfy ride. The steering wheel feels very nice. It's nice and firm. When you're turning, it's always, you know, same and predictable. You get smooth, smooth movements. It just feels, you know, very high quality when you're moving around. The ride itself is very smooth. The suspension's nice. It's the lane keeping assist does a great job of 
keeping it on track when it can see the lines. If you're on roads with not so nice li lines, you'll see the sensor kind of turn off. Um, it doesn't always tell you either when it's turning off, so you still have to keep your hands on the wheel, of course, to make sure you don't veer. It's not like fully self-driving. Um, other things that I like, the tactile feel of all the switches, the air knobs. These were little add-ons. If you guys are interested in this look, either blue, red, or silver, I'll leave a link in the description, but I feel like it matches the air vent knobs here. So I added those on. They just like slide on and stick there. And there's a silver one for this that I might be getting as well soon. Um, but overall, very nice feel to all these switches, all the buttons, very nice feel and sound effect. Nothing feels like cheap plastic. It all feels high quality. Um, steering wheel warmer. This one's very nice. It comes very handy in the mornings when it's cold on the way to work and the seat heater as well. I keep that going in the morning. Around 5,500 miles, I did get my tires rotated and the oil changed. Um, so they recommended at every 5,000 miles to get that done. My oil life was around like 60%. They typically want you to come back when it's like 15%, but I didn't want to wait that long, especially since the first two years or 24,000 miles, it's free. At least my dealership does. So I'm gonna take advantage of that and try to go at least four or five times before I hit the 24,000 miles. They don't recommend that you do it any sooner than 5,000 because you, the oil that they first place in your car, it's designed to help break in the engine. And if you change that out too soon, you might develop some engine issues later on. So don't jump the gun on that one. I'm glad I had um, a tech that kind of was really smart about the whole process. I um, didn't feel like he was just trying to push me to come back later. Um, he didn't have anything else to do that day, but we had a long discussion about the car and it is a different oil that the dealer or the manufacturer puts in at first. Um, so don't change it out too quick. It's made to help your engine. So two of the biggest complaints I see online is that there's no heads up display um, on the screen and that there's no panoramic moonroof. I agree, a heads up display would be cool, especially when you're paying all this extra money for the top level trim. That is something that should be included on a 2023 vehicle. In terms of the moonroof, I'm personally fine without it. I never use, oh sorry, panoramic moonroof, the one that goes over the whole ceiling. I'm personally fine without it. I don't even use this one. I prefer as much structural integrity as possible because you do ride in an SUV. And as you know, all SUVs have a higher rollover risk because they are higher off the ground. So if it were up to me, there would be not even this here. I would want as much metal and structural integrity as possible to prevent the roof from caving in. So I wouldn't even want the panoramic roof. It's also, I live in a very sunny area, so I do not want any more sun damage or sunburn as I'm driving. I did get the front windshield tinted because as I'm driving on the road, my hands would get kind of hot and start to burn. Um, and I don't want to wear sunscreen every single day when I'm only just driving to work. I did tint this window as well. This one's kind of a clear ceramic tint, so it will block 99% of the UV rays. It's much cooler inside as well when I get in my car after parking it somewhere. Um, but yeah, just a little update on the heat. Some of you also wanted an update on how I installed this little camera here so let me go over that as well all right so i taped it here on purpose because when i'm driving i don't see it at all as you can see it is not distracting um the screen stays on when i'm driving we got two cameras wired up here if you want a nice camera i will leave a link in the description below for this um, it worked really well during my 
incident in my previous vehicle so i got another one for this vehicle you know stick it up you can push your cables right under the lip here and it tucks in very nicely i ran that all the way around the edge here and just you know pushed it in it comes with a little tool that helps you wedge it in um, you won't be able to see it and then it comes out right over here and i brought that across just going down the side here wedged it in partly i didn't push it all the way in case i wanted to pull it out later um it goes down to here runs under the mat under both of the mats comes up over here and plugs in right here it's pretty inconspicuous i don't really notice it at all when driving so but it's nice to have here and then i have an additional uh, usb port for charging if we need so that makes it about five in the car total we have those three up there and then we got two more down here and then for the that's for the front camera that second wire goes to another camera towards the back so you can see it wired over there and then it is tucked in along here and that kind of goes up to a camera that I have mounted right there. And then we can see that on the inside. So I have a camera here. So I like to have one on the side in case we get sideswiped. Um, mostly because it wouldn't reach all the way to the back. So I have another system that's plugged into the USB right there and that runs up the side and along this crease here comes out right there and sticks there and then I left a little extra piece dangling so that when I open the trunk because this trunk opens upwards it needs a little wiggle room the one thing I wish I did was mount it off to the side though because I do see it in the rear view mirror um, wasn't it's not like it hinders me from driving. I can still see around it, but I wish I like mounted it up to the side there. That would have been easier and still covered um, my rear. For this, I should have ran it along the roof. Um, that way it would have just reached all the way to the back. Um, but I brought it up to here and then I was like, all right, this is a little too short. So I was like, whatever, I'll just make it a side camera. It was kind of too lazy to undo the fitting that I did and just got another camera, which works out fine because I can see three different views now. But yeah, very easy. It was like, you know, a 10 minute installation. Just stick it on there and you can just squeeze the wire in all around, super easy, puck and play. I'll leave that link in the bio if you wanna get your own. Definitely handy these days with the way insurance claims work. It's your word versus theirs. And a lot of the times people will just flat out lie and say you hit them instead. And if you don't have any proof, it's just gonna be a lot more of a headache to get your claim processed. So it's nice to have a little peace of mind that you'll have some evidence for in case something, God forbid, happens. An update on any maintenance I do. I do try to keep this thing as shiny as I can. I use California Gold Wax. Um, I do wash it every now and then. I will use tire shine. Pretty quick and easy process. If you don't have a clear coat on your vehicle, you should use some wax to keep your paint intact. I do use some UV um, protectant too on the plastic just to keep that from fading. I We do have an older CRV in the family and that one, the little plastic around the edges has gotten a little bleached from the sun and it's like a whiter tint. Um, so I'm placing the little UV protectant on the plastic all around the vehicle to make sure that it, you know, stays the same color long term and doesn't get that faded look. I know you can kind of torch the plastic and kind of heat it up so that it gets rid of that, but I just want to avoid it overall. Same thing with all the leather on the inside and the dash. I have a little UV protectant spray. I'll leave a link in the bio. I wipe that down whenever I wash the car, anywhere that the sun's generally hitting to prevent any fading. That's gonna happen with whatever you're driving, um, but it kind of acts just like a sunblock for your skin, a little UV protectant for your vehicle, keep it the nice same color and prevent it from discoloring. All right, so here is 
my mileage so far we have 6393 miles average fuel over all of that is 36.2 mpg um it is it's gotten a little bit better with the recent update and everything so we're sometimes hitting 37 38 on the actual drive um, but this is an overall trip so it includes like when i was getting 33 miles when i first purchased the vehicle um so there's my auto and my current mileage you guys can let me know what you're getting i know there's a wide variety which is really interesting um hopefully this evens out a little bit more over time all right so that was the mileage um total overall 36.1 miles per gallon since i bought the car this is the current mileage sorry i just did this a little later in the day <clears throat> but you know we got 50 miles on this current tank 41 miles per gallon average which is a little above normal um 90 percent of that is actually highway and highway speed so i really don't understand honda mpg and why it's higher sometimes and lower sometimes even though i take all the same roads but that is the current and then yeah so that is the average 36 over the 6,000 miles and there we are on the current take and this is post update uh post um yeah the software update that was done from that recall i posted before all right so that kind of wraps it up for this little 6,000 mile update if you are trying to decide between this vehicle or like a rav4 um, you can't go wrong with either just flip a coin they're both great cars i will say this one does have more comfortable seats and just even opening and closing the doors the sound and the latch everything just does feel a little bit higher quality and also i guess it really depends what's available in, in your area i know some dealerships are marking up rav 4s around 10,000. this one i got marked up around 2500 i think they wanted around five six thousand originally and i got them to bring it down a little bit I think the market's getting a little bit better. It really depends where you live and what the competition's like. I know a lot of you in the comments have been waiting three, four months to get your hands on this car. There are more sport models at the dealership that I see, not as many sport tourings, which if you're gonna get this car, I think the sport touring is the way to go. You get the larger two-cylinder engine um, that gives a little bit more power and kick versus that 1.5 liter, sorry, two liter not two cylinder um but more than the 1.5 that isn't the strongest in the gas version of this car um but yeah thank you guys for watching please leave any comments below on your thoughts of anything i went over are those issues you think would be a deal breaker for you for getting this vehicle um, i'm sure every car has their own little few issues I just wanted to try to point out everything that I could for those trying to consider the vehicle. Um, that's all I could think of for now. I'll keep you guys updated in future videos. Um, but overall, yeah, I'm very happy with the vehicle. Glad I made the purchase. I do drive a lot, so it's been a very comfortable ride. Everything feels nice. Please subscribe and keep an eye out for the next video. Thank you guys.